Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Talk with Patrick, a podcast where I sit down with some guests of mine and we talk about whatever we want because we can do that just like that. Today, I have two lovely guests. I have Leah and Nohad. Welcome, you both. Hello. How are you both doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. But how are you doing, Nohad? I'm doing well. So today we talked about maybe possibly going into some of the hobbies we've been doing to keep ourselves busy during these times. The pandemic gives some tips and tricks to our lovely guests and audience members that might be listening. So I thought we'd start with maybe Leah. How have you been keeping yourself busy during the pandemic? Yeah, so I mean, I think I can speak for both Noha and I. We both started a new job during the pandemic. So that's one thing that's been keeping us busy. Like I think, and I also started a university program during the pandemic. And I know Noha has a lot of other projects outside of work too. So I think one thing is like, not even necessarily a hobby, but just our work itself keeps us super busy during the pandemic. Um, and then I know, um, we also both were talking about how, like, we spend more time outside now. Like, um, I, I've always loved the outdoors, like my whole life, but I used to always travel to go hiking. Like my family, we would go to the States a lot to go hiking, go, uh, you know, to the parks there, but during the pandemic, we found a lot of other places just in our neighborhood to go for like nice walks or obviously Gatineau, we can't go there right now. But um, that park there, we've been doing a lot of hiking. Um, So that's one thing that, uh, yeah, I've been doing to keep myself busy during the pandemic. That's awesome. What about you, Nohad? What hasn't Leah covered? Yeah, so agreeing with Leah, like the walks and stuff is great. Something else I've been also doing is kind of just making a list of new activities I haven't tried before. So if that's like going to a different coffee shop and getting a coffee from there or checking out like an Etsy shop that I haven't done before or taking a different walking path, like something new, something novel is what I'll try and add to it. Um, I also tried to add some like books I haven't read before, write something a little you as well, eh, Patrick, (laughs) trying to do something like that. So I find like my list of hobbies has turned into like trying to find something I haven't done before and just trying it out. Another really easy one I find is just like turning on like a YouTube um, exercise video that I haven't accessed before and I'll do that and I'll be like, okay, that's cool. And I can see Leah nodding too, something she's also tried for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, So I really tried to focus on newness in the best way possible because I find with COVID, everything feels the same. Like every day feels the same. (laughs) So, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of been crazy in the sense of, like you're saying, trying to keep yourselves busy, trying to bring new, fresh ideas, try different things. Now's a lot of time, a lot of the time people have been trying new activities or like, learning to try different recipes even cooking or reading some books that you wouldn't necessarily have had time to do or wanted to do and kind of buckling down and like reading those or even like a new netflix series or going out going for hikes in the local area is always super great and helpful now Leah, you did touch on something that I think would be super interesting to talk about. We won't go into too many details and Nohad, you can also talk about it. What is it like starting a new job during the pandemic and not being able to really get to know your team, let's say, on a more personal face-to-face level? How's that been like? And why don't we start with Nohad? Yeah, so I would say that's been challenging and difficult because a lot of the teams that we that like a lot of teams that have become mobile or virtual were would meet up before right prior to pandemic they knew each other they had some form of relationship developed and so me being the new person joining joining a new team was really challenging to like get myself to you know get to know new people especially virtually and some people don't like to turn on their cameras so you don't ever know what they actually look like or you're not really able to make that connection so I found that really challenging another piece of it is like the whole training piece it's all virtual um, for people who don't know I'm a caseworker I deal with a lot of like funds and just like a whole system that we have to issue funds for and like with clients so that was really challenging as well I find now 
I have more like colleague friends who aren't necessarily on my team team um, for whatever reason I've connected with other individuals um, which is interesting but it's definitely very challenging very very challenging I wonder what Leah's thoughts are as well mm. yeah I definitely echo what No had said overall it's been very challenging but I think one really interesting point that No had made is it it's really hard to learn how to do your job during the pandemic, especially because no one really knows how to do your job during the pandemic. Like it's new to everyone. So it's not only new to you, like you have to navigate the system for yourself, but also um, one good part of it is that you do kind of branch out more and interact with people you otherwise wouldn't. Like, um, so I have made friends and connections with people who weren't on my specific team but our paths crossed because of the pandemic and we, I guess, supported each other because we didn't necessarily have the support of our teams in the traditional sense. So it kind of has like introduced me to some new people at work, which is one positive aspect, but overall I would agree it's hard during the pandemic, especially when like those traditional support systems aren't always there. Like what know how to saying, I work with people who I don't know what they look like and that's completely okay. Like I know they probably don't know what I look like either because no one ever feels like turning their camera on, but it's just very different. Like your connection with people is different in some ways it's stronger, but in other ways it's weaker. So, yeah. Okay. And I mean, like you're both saying, that's understandable. Everything's virtual now, pretty much. So you're not making that physical connection, that in-person connection. Like you're saying, you're not even sometimes seeing the other person's face and stuff. And that can be challenging at times. But Leah, you also mentioned another thing that you're doing during the pandemic, which is super interesting, is you're taking courses. Uh, so I know online tr courses and classes were a thing before the pandemic, but I feel like it's probably ramped up even more so now. And how has that juggling been? New job, taking courses, everything's virtual. So it's like you're not even leaving to do things, yeah. but you're having to shift your brain to like do different things constantly. How has that been like? Yeah, it's been interesting. And also it'd be interesting to hear from Nohad too, because I know she's on the other side trying to teach people and get people to get their work done during the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, I really, I kind of thought about delaying my degree because of the pandemic and I like everything that's going on, but I just kind of wanted to get going with it. And in some ways it's helpful because there's not a lot to do during the pandemic. I mean, of course there are new hobbies we can explore and everything, but you know, when everything's shut down, at least I have my schoolwork to focus on. And that also kind of, even though it adds extra stress in a lot of ways, like it's really hard to deal with everything at work in your life. And then know like you also have this big project due, but in a way, like it kind of keeps me grounded because I have to focus on it on something. So I can't dwell too much over what's happening in the world because like I have to focus on my schoolwork at the same time definitely can be hard to focus sometimes because like you spend your whole day in like one small space. Yeah. So, um, and also I try to be like, I don't want to say cut corners, but I try to be efficient. So like, <laughs> I'm the type of person, you know, if I'm at school listening to a lecture and I'm like, hmm, this is kind of like basic. I already read the textbook. I know this, I'll start working on something else. And I feel like that has been amplified during the pandemic. Cause like, you'll be on a call at work and you're like, hmm, this is like, you know, not super helpful. Maybe I should like also glance at my, this email that I got about school or like you'll be on a call for school and you're like, hmm, I have, you know, these emails to respond to at work. So it's like, in some ways it's harder to focus because of the pandemic, yeah. I would say. Okay. And Leah dropped a little bit of a tidbit. No had yeah. you teach <laughs> during the pandemic. So how's that? I mean, it's going well. My courses, the thing is, my courses were always virtual, regardless of like prior to pandemic, pandemic. Um, so I find that it's the same. I do find like the students are possibly having more challenges because usually their whole semester isn't fully virtual. So they have my virtual class and then a whole other virtual like 
load. So I find that they're probably like Leah unable to focus, right? So we're trying to multitask because everything's virtual and like right at the tip of our fingers, but at the same time, it's almost like we're squirrels. We like see something, want to do it. And then we go to the next thing and like not really finishing the first task, but I do that too. So Leah, you're not the only one. The other thing that's different for me is I counsel and I provide therapy, right? And I've been doing that virtually now, which is so much more, it's such a different modality than what I'm used to. So that I've been finding really challenging as well. I'm not sure like how effective, effective it is. I hope that it is. I haven't heard otherwise, you know, I haven't heard any complaints, which is helpful, but it obviously still feels like there's some form of disconnect. And I still see some individuals in person because a form of therapy they need needs to be in person. But um, a lot of the people who are virtual, some even just prefer phone sessions, which like I'm not seeing their face at all. It's just my voice and their voice. So it's interesting. Technology is definitely great in some ways. And then other ways, I feel like we're really disconnected because of it. So, yeah. That's kind of interesting. And I mean... Not to focus on no head right now, Leah, but I want to kind of zone in and zoom in a bit on that is Mm -hmm. you're talking about counseling and I'm sure mental health is a huge part right now during the pandemic. And I believe business is booming, as they would say, in that aspect. So you're probably facing, you have your own personal things that Mm -hmm. you're dealing with with the pandemic, but you're also receiving um, other people's like, I won't say issues, but like problems or challenges Challenges. that they're facing and different Mm -hmm. things like that. So how do you kind of, how do you try and separate the two? And I'm sure you've learned to do that prior to the pandemic, but I think the pandemic probably really magnified it as well. So what are some things that you do or tips and tricks that you would suggest? Oh, for sure. So a lot of the times, like once I meet with individuals after my sessions, I'll take some time to just like zone out a bit, listen to some music, just so that I'm not fully focused on like what I just like went through with a with a client or a session, if it was really challenging. Something else I'll do is I'll make sure that my routine is in place. I find if my routine is off, that I'm more likely to like latch onto something else and kind of ruminate or focus on that. Um, Something else that I really find helpful is just like writing three things I'm grateful for, right? And just focusing on myself because if I start to like consume other people's challenges and take them on to my own and kind of carry them with me, then I'm really gonna feel it, right? So I know that if I go back and just focus on myself and just focus on what's happening to me, it's way more helpful because I can only control that, right? I can't control someone else's behavior and actions. And kind of like what you said, I've kind of like learned this habit of being able to definitely disconnect the the two and understand that like that's their, their challenges and these are mine. So definitely being able to disconnect has been helpful and really just, you know, um, tune out. So like watch a funny comedy Netflix show, Kim's convenience, love it. Superstore. Love it. I'm like throwing in plugs. Is that okay? Yeah, go for (laughs) it. I love those shows. Watch those too. (laughs) But yeah. Awesome. And now to kind of turn it towards Leah. Leah, you're doing schoolwork and you're facing obviously different challenges than Leah, uh, than Nohad, I mean. And I mean, we're all facing different challenges. But what are some ways that you help to like separate the two or de-stress we'll say after having a challenging um, class um so i think what no had referred to in terms of setting a routine has been really helpful i think i read a study that like it's really important that like the last hour of your day and the first hour of your day is for yourself if you want to help um i mean i guess support your mental health and also help develop good sleeping habits, which is something I've really struggled with in the past. Like when I was an undergrad, I used to stay up till like 2 a.m. studying. And then I would wake up and the first thing I would do is like, you know, just throw on some clothing and go study again. And like, I guess it helped with grades, but it didn't help with my mental health. I was always really stressed during exam season. So now in grad school, I'm trying to just be less focused on the grade and more focused on like the learning and enjoying myself. So um, the first hour of my day when I used to work in the office during the pandemic, I would walk to work 
So, you know, that was time just to myself. And I would like pick up a latte as I was going into work, which was helpful because I always used to do that before the pandemic. So like it helped retain that sense of normalcy. And um, I would always like watch a fun TV show. I try to do that before bed. So it's not like I'm going from like job to school to bed. Like I do try and integrate that time for myself and um, at least I, for my program, my professors have been mostly really like compassionate, I guess, if people really do need that extension, even if there's not like a concrete reason, if they're just stressed out, usually the professors are pretty open to giving an extension or like working with you, offering extra help. So that has helped a lot too. That's really, that's a good point and some good takeaways. And I'm glad that you're doing that because I think we can all agree that normalcy is kind of what we're really wanting to grasp on is that sense of normalcy because everything's kind of feeling uncertain or unnormal or not normal or whatever we want to call it. And we just want a bit of a routine, a pattern that we're used to since everything's kind of been flipped upside down, we'll say. But uh, those are awesome tips. I know for me, yeah, listening to music, watching TV shows, Superstore is a big one. Uh, hobbies such as the podcast or my YouTube channel or my personal business I do on evenings and weekends or different things like that also help me kind of like kind of busy myself, we'll say, or take my attention away from focusing on all the negative that might be happening right now and things like that. So those are big things for me as well. But uh, unfortunately, we're kind of running out of time here. So I'm going to just wrap it up with a simple, quick question, quick answer from both of you. And we'll, we'll end it with what is your must watch easy binge tv series and we'll start with no hat gilmore girls gilmore <laughs> that's girls. the first thing that came to mind yeah it's easy to watch i mean if you like that type of stuff so yeah gilmore girls easy to watch binge. Nice. yeah leah um so i always draw a blank when people ask me what i'm watching like i love gilmore girls too obviously the office is always a classic yes. like, you don't need to watch it from start to finish you can just watch a few episodes here and there. And I mean, I've been watching a lot of like really embarrassing reality TV too. I find that always. <laughs> yeah. Lot, so. Some good old trash reality TV is always <laughs> great. Um, I'd say for me, uh, I always kind of fall back on a TV show called Scream Queens um, from I think 2015, 2016. It's just a good show that I enjoy watching. It's silly, it's campy, it has some like, horror slasher genre a bit in it but in a comedy type way so i enjoy that show a lot so there you go three kind of plugs we've got gilmore girls the office or trashy reality tv or we've got screen queens so i just want to thank you both for joining me today on the podcast um so a big thank you and a thank you to our listeners. I hope you enjoyed our podcast today. Now you can find my podcast wherever podcasts can be found. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any other platform. Also, if you have suggestions, questions, you can always email me at realtalkwithpatrick at gmail.com. Again, that's realtalkwithpatrick at gmail.com. Thank you and have an awesome day, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>